And, and it's always my pleasure to uh, bring to you the uh, fine, wonderful people from Fort Ticonderoga. They have that wonderful historic uh, adventure. I call it an adventure because when you go there, it's, well, well look who's sitting next to me. How about an adventure there? Yes, ma'am. And you are Stuart Lilly. I'm, I'm the director of interpretation at Fort Ticonderoga. So our, our public programming, our, our visitor interactive uh, you know, tours and demonstrations, uh, whether it's you know, weapons or oh, the mechanical arts like tailoring or shoemaking, I, I, I direct and, and, and train those. Well, it's, when I was up there, it was amazing because we were walking around and there would be a guy making something over on the table. He was doing some food, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, and he was doing that. And somebody else was working with leather, I think, or, mm -hmm. or, or maybe, I don't know, sinew or something, doing some sewing. I don't yeah. know. But I was fascinated by it. Yeah, so. it, it, it's, it's wonderful stuff. I mean, the... The, the great thing about history is that it's not that different than what we do today. Whether it, it's cooking, you know, a, a midday meal, where you still got to chop up the carrots and peas, and, and that's and what all he was doing. Exactly, actually, yeah. That, yeah. Or, or whether it's, you know, putting shoes on your feet or, or, or you know, getting dressed every morning. To some extent, there, there's a what I call it, sort of an ahistorical quality, in that it doesn't matter what generation you're in. There's some, there's some commonality, and, and that by bringing out that commonality, it allows us to, to talk with visitors about you know what what legitimately was different, you know what what would have set these what was these the same and what was different. Yeah, what would have set these times apart? What would have been you know people's real experience on the ground here at, at, at Ticonderoga? Well, you know, I think about that when we go through this heat spell. I'm thinking. What did those people do that didn't have air conditioning? I'm dying, and I can't yeah. even. And I'm looking at this gentleman. Would you mind standing up, please? Oh, no. Because I think that they should see your outfit from your shoes right on up, because yeah. your shoes are look very authentic. Yeah, they, these are actually a pair of shoes I made. Um, you know, thinking of uh, summer weight clothing. These are. Oh, at, wait, let's see if I can move the table. Okay, go that. ahead. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know if that works for you, but it works for me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, th these are actually a summer weight shoe. Um, they're what's called a turn shoe. They're made inside out and turned right side out. Oh, so really? they're, they're very, very lightweight. So they're, they're reversible. No. <laughs> yeah, you only do it once, yeah. Um, and your pants are corduroy? Yes, ma'am. Just a pair of uh, nice plain corduroy breeches. These are kind of great kind of uh, lightweight summer weight wear. Or, this or, is summer weight? Okay. Mm -hmm, for, for going out <laughs> oh, riding. And, yeah. You know, they're great, great for that. And then the, the waistcoat, well, that, that's a woolen broadcloth. You're, he's wearing wool on wool. No kidding. This yeah. is, look at this. This is absolutely gorgeous. And then a, a woolen coat over that. Now, the wool is, is certainly thick, but it, it's not, it, it, it breathes. You know, if this was a double knit polyester oh, leisure yeah, suit, you couldn't, you couldn't. yeah, that, that would be sweating. Yeah. This, this and it is, would, this wouldn't fit into the period anyway. Right, yeah. <laughs> it, it would look out of place, <laughs> yeah. And your hat, tell us about your hat. Uh, this hat is made out of, uh, it's a felt and it's a, described as a cocked hat, um, and it's made out of uh, actually beaver fur, the pit plucked out of the Oh, that is beaver? Yes, ma'am. I'll be darned. Okay. Or they would have called it castor or mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. beaver. That's how we lost all our beavers. No. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, they're back. Yeah, I think anyone who's got a farm on a stream knows that they're back. Yeah. A um, little bit of velvet cockade, just yeah. a little bit of, a little bit of, little bit of flair. You know, a, a, a man a man suit in in 1775 is it's different than what a man suit I mean, is today. But you know, a lot of the elements are the same. You know, whether it's just a you know neck. Now I notice that you got that around your neck. It, that yeah. looks awfully warm. Now, what was? Did they do that to protect the clothing that they were wearing because they they couldn't send it to the dry cleaners, right? Well, actually, they do have dry cleaning back okay. then. It, it, it's, it's a hard service to find. No, what your neck cloth is doing? It's the you know, it's like wearing a tie. You know, okay. just. You can put it on right over your shirt. Oh, I see. Shirt. It goes over your shirt. I thought yeah. it went under your... Okay, I got it. Yeah, that. so you can put it on. This, this is just a simple... You know, believe it or not, what I'm wearing is sort of like business casual dress. Okay. Th this is the khaki and polo shirt okay. uh, of, of 1775. Good. Beth, I'm, I didn't mean to leave no, you out this here, is but very I, exciting. I thought we needed to kind of <laughs> no, highlight right. this. The wonderful. Absolutely. Yeah, and you are the executive director for Ticonderoga, I and I know you have some wonderful events. You just came off a big event. 
Tell our viewers a little bit about what they would find if they went up there. Absolutely. Well, Stuart really impersonates the experience for our viewers. Uh, we recreate a moment in time. And so for our daily visitors, they are able to experience 1775 this year. And Stuart's clothing represents that based on the research in our object collection, archival collection, and then translates it into a living experience, including historic trades, um, soldiers' life programs, tourist musket demonstrations. Visitors can certainly experience a great exhibits and a whole plethora of really great uh, events that we still have in our calendar. We're open through October 18th, and we have programs filling almost every single weekend. Um, well, it's an amazing <laughs> place to go to. I know that I loved your museum and your dioramas, and you know, just really wonderful. And it kind of brings you into it, and you kind of immerse yourself in it. That's the goal. It's, it's really recreating that moment in time. And we're so fortunate because we're surrounded by such stunning beauty, unspoiled landscape, as well as having such an incredible a history. Beautiful area town. up there. So this coming weekend, uh, July 28th, is a special day in Fort Ticonderoga's history. In 1776, it was the date that marks when the Declaration of Independence was read at the fort. And in order to celebrate that, we are highlighting the day uh, full of activities for the whole family. Uh, we have our fife and drum muster. Uh, the fife and drum corps uh, under the interpretive department will uh, have a number of performances throughout the day. And uh, we'll have a muster. So that will be really oh, exciting. Oh, yeah, that is nice. Uh, and then in the e afternoon from 4.30 till 6.30, we'll have the Fort Ticonderoga Community Clam Bake, which um, recreates the 1908 experience, a clam bake when the community came together and wanted to restore the fort so it's really highlighting our wonderful preservation uh, story as an organization uh, that is from 4 30 to 6 30 and tickets are $25 for that that's pretty reasonable uh, it's for a great a price break, yeah. and a fabulous menu so check out our website at forticonderoga.org and then if you attend that then you can also attend the Adirondack Jazz Orchestra uh, which is going to perform at 7 o'clock in the evening on the beautiful Kings Garden lawn and I know you've oh, been the there. Oh the Kings Garden is wonderful. And, uh, and we also sell separate tickets for that so if you can pick and choose the menu but it's a full day of activities and really highlighting uh, one of America's greatest stories and, uh, and and really building our future. Would the clam bake and everything be appropriate for kids? Absolutely and we have a great menu that not just clams some people say oh I'm allergic to shellfish so we, we do have hamburgers and grilled chicken and great desserts and uh, so it definitely is appropriate for the whole family the whole day experience. So before uh, Ticonderoga. if you're going up say from the capital region go up and spend the whole day. Absolutely spend the whole day. Are there day. hotels in the area? That there are hotels and bed and breakfasts uh, uh, locations so uh, in Ticonderoga and the surrounding areas so uh, we encourage everybody to come spend the night and come back the next day because we have such a diverse and wonderful experience and it's, such it's a talented amazing. staff. It's uh, amazing. We brought uh, people from uh, uh, out of the area yeah. to that and they were just amazed by it. And a lot of visitors don't realize we're a not-for-profit you know they, they assume that we're because we are a destination uh, and, and a major economic engine for the region but we are not-for-profit and visitors in their own way help us serve or are part of serving this incredible mission to make sure this site uh, is thriving and has a bright future. And keep history alive. And keep history alive. And thank you so much for that doing that, both of you. And you're just thank amazing. You. You're an amazing man, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be able to do this, I'm just in awe. <laughs> so anyway, thank you both thank for being you. here. Yeah, and thanks, Sharon, for bringing you on the show. Yeah.